according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, a state religion is established by law as the only official religion of a state. I'd like to show you how the doctrine of the Trinity was first imposed by the government, not the church, and how it was first established under the penalty of banishment and eventually death. But first, a definition of Trinitarian Christianity, according to the Westminster Confession of 1646. So that is the belief that there is only one living and true God, and that there are three persons of one substance, power, and eternity. And this is called the Trinitarian Godhead. So what happened was that back in 380 AD, there was an edict issued by three Roman emperors, Gratian, Theodosius I, and Valentinian II. What's historically interesting about this particular edict is that we have the, the actual month and date, February 27th, which according to many historians is very rare to see. Now, the edict that was issued reads in part, according to the apostolic teaching and the doctrine of the gospel, let us believe in the one deity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in equal majesty and in a holy trinity. We authorize the followers of this law to assume the title of Catholic Christians, but as for the others, since in our judgment they are foolish madmen, we decree that they shall be branded with the ignominious name of heretics and shall not presume to give to their conventicles, that is, where they gather, the name of churches. They will suffer, in the first place, the chastisement of the divine condemnation, and in the second, the punishment of our authority, which in accordance with the will of heaven we shall decide to inflict. So to summarize, the Trinity is called a Catholic, that is, universal and apostolic biblical doctrine. This is really the first time that we have an explicit reference to a trinity, that is one God existing in three separate distinct persons. It's also the first time Christians brand other Christians as foolish madmen and even heretics. It's also the first state crackdown on other churches that oppose this edict. And as you can see, the first time there is Christian on Christian violence. So there's belittling, banishing your opponent, and ultimately killing your opponent who called themselves Christians as well. According to the book, To Church and State Through the Centuries, the edict is the first which definitely introduces Catholic orthodoxy as the established religion of the Roman world. It marks the end of the fourth century religious controversy on the Trinity occasioned by the Arian heresy and calling forth definitions of orthodox dogma by the Council of Nicaea 325 and Constantinople 381, which happened the following year. And just a side note, what's interesting about the 381 Council is that the creed that they came up with is really a rehashing of the Nicene Creed of 325, and it has no Trinitarian language that assimilates the language in this edict. Acknowledgement of the true doctrine of the Trinity is made the test of state recognition. The citation of the Roman See as the yardstick of correct belief is significant. Bracketing of the name of the Patriarch of Alexandria with that of the Pope was due to the Egyptian See's stalwart defense of the Trinitarian position, particularly under St. Athanasius. The last sentence of the edict indicates that the emperors contemplate the use of physical force in the service of orthodoxy. This is the first recorded instance of such a departure. And the Roman state eventually made good on its threat when in the 6th century, even the reciting of the Shema was banned in the synagogues as a denial of the Trinity. This is noted in the Cambridge History of Judaism, among other publications. As a result of persecution during the Byzantine period, guards were sent to the synagogue to prevent this recitation of the Shema because its proclamation of God's unity was thought to impugn, if only implicitly, the Christian notion of the Trinity. In John 16, Jesus prophesied, they will bang you from the synagogues. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering service to God. They will do these things 
because they have not known the Father or me. That sounds awfully like what has happened, sadly, until today.